what is up guys this is Tiro back with another video and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Nusantara project official version 4.5 the name is Sinila and this is of course based on Android 12 and this is the 11th May 2022 build and I have been using this ROM for a couple of days now and in my experience this has been one of the best ROMs that I have tried so far and yes I can definitely say that over the Pixel OS and when I'm talking about all those Yes, the last some of the ROMs that I have tried with the Anix camera and stuff, it had the bugs like while taking a selfie or something, it used to take like a little bit bloody selfie. By the way, I have the 64 megapixel variant of the Redmi Note 10 Pro and of course this is a Indian Redmi Note 10 Pro. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out the other which I have made separate reviews on those particular ROMs. Right now, that problem has been totally fixed with the Anix camera. Because let me actually tell you first about the MIUI camera and this is actually a port of the MIUI camera itself. This is not the Anix camera as far as I know and with this camera, yes, the selfies and stuff are really really awesome. Let me actually show you. I did take some selfies and just notice how much details are there. This is a normal selfie and this is a portrait one. So yes, I did take the selfies with the volume buttons and that actually shakes the device a little bit. But with that, with the other or previous ROMs, I have seen it takes a lot more shaky pictures, but here that problem is not there. And yes, this is a perfectly working MIUI camera. And yes, with that, you also get the macro mode and stuff. They are working perfectly fine if you're noticing. And all these things are just awesome. And in the video settings, yes, I have also shot a couple of videos on this particular device. 4K 30fps is possible and also 1080p 60fps is possible. Even in the pro mode, if you want to shoot videos and stuff, yes, you can definitely do that up to 4K 30fps again. Also 1080p 60fps option is there and they work perfectly fine over here. There is not a problem at all with these. And if you want to look at the portrait mode and stuff, yes, front camera portraits are working great too. And here one thing is really good is that we have the 64 megapixel mode working perfectly fine. The vlog mode and stuff is there, document mode and the dual video mode as well. Also there is this sticker avatars and here it says it's updating and these should be working perfectly fine once it updates. So yeah, no problems at all with this kind of camera. And if I swipe up, I will get even more options like the slow motion and stuff. And with this particular like MIUI camera, I haven't had any issues at all. And this camera is one of the best things that you can get on this particular custom ROM. Whichever ROM has this MIUI camera, I will definitely say that you can go for that ROM because the camera experience overall in this Nusantara build is just amazing. And if you don't know how to actually flash this ROM, you can check out the cards or the description. Right now, let me just jump into the settings and go to the about section. In the Android version section, this is how it looks like. And if you tap here, you will get the Nusantara project logo and you will get the version and stuff. The version is 4.5, of course, and the build date here is 8th May 2022, I guess. And here we have the story of Sinila and stuff. Let me go back. We have the maintainer's name right here, BMW, it says. And we have the chipset version and stuff. Then we have the build number and the Android version, if you're noticing, is Android 12 L. We have the security patch of latest of May 5th, 2022. The stock kernel here is the Sigma kernel and this Linux status shows as enforcing. And here, let me just go into the system and here you will see we have the gestures. There we get the quickly open camera and stuff. Then we have the quick tap and that is actually the back tap option over here. Then we have the system navigation gestures. And if you go into the settings, we get the swipe to invoke assistant. Then if we scroll down more, we get the pill length and the radius customization as well. We get the pill margin of bottom customization. And we also get the full screen gestures and the back gesture animation. So yes, this is Nusantara ROM. So no issues with the customizations. There are huge amount of customizations in every step. There is also the two button and three button navigations as well. And here we have the lift to check phone. Toggle flashlight is kind of disabled for some reason. And we have the press and hold and we have this hold to toggle flashlight and stuff. So yes, press and hold power button to toggle flashlight. Let me actually see if it's working. So yes, right now, if you're noticing it's working perfectly fine. So no issues with that. And here we have the skip music track option. Then we have the adaptive playback and stuff. So all these things are there. And if you're noticing the background kind of blurred, this is actually a theming option. You can enable it from the settings. I'll show you from where. But first, let me talk about the home screen. Well, this is how the home screen looks like. And if you keep tapping and holding on a blank area, you will get this kind of wallpaper section, the widget section and the home screen settings. Talking about the home screen settings. Yes, this is a pixel launcher that you get by default here. And that's how it is. And if you go into the wallpapers, let me show you which wallpapers you get. So if you go into this change wallpaper and this Nusantara option, 
so yeah this is one nusantara wallpaper then we have this revolution option and here we get the other one and we have this and this is another nusantara project wallpaper and here we have this wallpaper and i have been using this default one so yes these are the wallpapers that you get but also there are these strange dimensions and we have this unsplash option and we have this on device wallpaper this is again a nusantara wallpaper so yeah these wallpapers you will get and the space wallpapers are there too yes they look beautiful too so you can go with those and the accent colors and stuff then we have the dark theme then the themed icons also the app grid you can customize from right here we have up to five by five then we have the system icon customization so icon packs you can actually change and before you change that you can actually see how the icons will look so this is really great let me go back from here and by the way there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen on this particular rom because the pixel launcher simply does not support that and here in the settings if you go there is no double tap to sleep here so that's how it is but of course there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar but before i show you that let me just enable the always on display and right now if i just double tap this is how the always on display looks like if you're noticing in the background there is that blur if you're using that theme i do not use the always on display at all so that's why i it doesn't bother me much but yeah that's how it is for some reason the always on display is working weirdly right now not really sure what's happening but yeah let me show you the thing with scanner speed i just tap the thing with scanner and supposedly it unlocks so yep no problems at all with the thing with scanner here just notice how fast it unlocks i just tap the thing with scanner and this is how it unlocks so yep it's working fine let me try with the other finger and yep it's working great if you're noticing so no issues whatsoever with the thing with scanner speed it works perfectly fine now let me try the face unlock over here i hope i have set that up and yes it works fine let me try one more time i just double tap on the lock screen or always on display and when i swipe up it should unlock yes it does and when you are using the front camera actually just notice the black border on the front camera and that is a really big black border i would say so it will actually help you once you are in a video call or something so that's I think a really good point over here that it won't bother you in video calls or something by the way there is also app lock and here this is how the app lock UI looks like once you are trying to unlock a particular lock tab and once you tap the thing with scanner as you can see it just opens no issues whatsoever with the app lock either now let's talk about the quick setting panel yes this is how it looks like and I did customize it a little bit I think there we get the time and date and we have the network stuff and the battery and stuff and we have the quick setting toggles of course and if I click on edit, then you can edit and add multiple toggles over here. There are a plethora of toggles that you can add from here. But let me actually show you. We have the Wi-Fi, the mobile data and the Bluetooth headset toggle. And by the way, once you have connected to a Bluetooth headset, there is the Bluetooth battery icon. Also, it shows the battery percentage right there. By the way, this is how the stock dialer looks like. Of course, this is a Google dialer. Yes, what do you calling are working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. There is also the call recording option in the stock Google dialer. So that's a thumbs up from me. So I was in the quick setting panel. We have the flashlight, the dark theme, auto rotate, night light, and the always on display toggle is there, of course. And the nearby share, then the screen recording option is there. By the way, you get all these animations. Just notice how fluid it looks. These are the Android 12 L animations and they look beautiful we have the heads up toggle the battery saver the do not disturb and the data saver as well the google home kind of toggle is there and the extra dim also you can change the refresh rate on the go if you want to of course the brightness slider is appearing on the bottom because i customized that and inside power menu we get the advanced reboot and of course you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot by the way if you're using the dark theme the whole quick setting panel turns dark let me actually show you that and this is how it looks in the dark theme everything from the power menu and stuff turns dark in the dark theme so yeah that's great even the app drawer and stuff the whole UI of course turns to pitch black because i have that black theme enabled and if i just disable that just notice the whole theme actually turns white this is what i like over here that even the power menu and stuff turns white in the light theme so this is great in my opinion in the settings panel again this is how it looks like we got the nusantara wings and about in this top section then we have the wi-fi and the battery toggle separately and this is actually a unique kind of thing i would say now firstly let me show you the customizations if you want to skip this part you can definitely do that by the way in this blur kind of thing we have this kind of look and if you're noticing it's not properly visible in this kind of theme i forgot from where i enabled that okay so nusantara blur style I'll just have to, okay, settings will be restarted. So let's just restart the settings. So yes, finally after reboot, this is how it looks like. And firstly, we have the system and the game space over here. 
inside game space we have the disable heads up and the in-game ringer mode and stuff and we have all these other options for the gaming mode so for some reason it's turning dark every time i go inside themes not really sure what's happening but if i go inside themes again okay so i think i have the black theme enabled from here that's why it's happening no idea but let me just disable that and if i just disable the dark theme again so yes finally that kind of bug is fixed so if you have the black theme enabled and if you go inside themes this whole panel turns to black again no idea why but yeah we have the dynamic status bar and stuff if you want to enable those and we of course have that nusantara blur style if you want to enable that then we have the font styles and these are the font styles that we get over here a lot of fonts are there and the icon packs of course you can change those and of course you can have the icon shapes changing option then we have the monet theme engine from here you can actually customize the accurate shades and stuff and we have the black theme enabling option and then nusantara clear theme option is there then we have the notifications we have the notification count the ambient edge lighting the heads up you can customize or disable from here then we have the blink flashlight for incoming call and the in call vibration options let me go back to the misc settings we have the screenshot sound the unlimited google photo storage and the screen off animation you can actually customize the swipe right screenshot is actually working perfectly fine there is a capture mode edit delete and share option no issues with the swipe right screenshot the double tap to sleep is there for the lock screen and status bar both and the click to take partial screenshot option is there now let's head over to the lock screen and here inside lock screen items we have the four small clock the charging animation and the charging info and we also got the temperature units you can actually change that inside fingerprint scanner options we have only the vibration and the ripple effect that's it so so yes that is the ripple effect from the fingerprint and here we have the battery options and we have the left battery text you can also have it on the right again and we have all these options for the battery style and for the status bar battery icons this rom is one of the best just notice how much battery styles are there that's like a little bit of like a cylinder kind of look but i have been using it with the style b i actually like it with the landscape r and we have the battery percentage position changing option you can have it on the outside or inside and we have the battery percentage and estimate kind of enabling option let me go back to the clock and date and of course you can enable and customize the clock and date options over here i did actually enable and customize that that's why we have all those date options or informations over here of the month and the date as well now we have the icon manager then we have the tuner for the status bar we got the headset bluetooth etc icons and all of the options are there the colored icon option is there and we got the nusantara logo and we have the vault icon the 4g icon also we have the show data disabled icon and the show activity indicators let me go back to the quick setting panel here we have the clear all button and if you scroll down more we have the quick setting for the text and stuff and if you scroll down more we got the brightness slider position changing option you can actually change the position to the bottom or top then we have the brightness control so you can slide a finger on the status bar to actually adjust or control the brightness as you can see it's working perfectly fine here no issues whatsoever inside traffic indicators of course you can enable that but i do use a separate app for that so i didn't enable that and here we have the button so volume rocker wick and the volume panel on the left side you can customize that inside navigation we have the nav bar toggle and if you scroll down more we got the haptic feedback extended swipe actions and stuff and all the system navigations again so that is all the customizations that we get here now in the battery settings this is how it looks like for some reason i am not really sure why sometimes the battery temperature goes as zero but right now as you can see i just went back and went to the battery settings and it got fixed but my complaint is there is no battery charging cycle saying option over here some of the roms are including that in like recently i would say but here you don't actually get that so that's a disappointment for me but overall the battery life on this rom has been good and here inside thermal profiles of course you can choose the thermal profiles to be benchmark browser camera etc and of course you can choose that per app basis but let me actually show you the battery life that i have got with the aku battery app and here if you're noticing i have got a screen on time of about 9 hours and 11 minutes that's really good i would say the 9 hour screen on time is really really good and there is the standby time and inside health you can see i have about 90 percent battery health left over here it's been a year almost in terms of fast charging and stuff they are working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with charging and even the charging animation looks really awesome so yeah no problems that i have faced regarding the battery life but yes, I would have loved to see the battery charging cycle and stuff being added in this battery settings. In the sound settings, this is how it looks like. We have all the media call ring, etc. volumes. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. It, you can expand it just like this. 
and we can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here of course you can control the volume also there is this like device control over here you can change the volume to speaker or something if you want to even when you have a bluetooth headset connected and we have the vibrate for cause ringtone vibration pattern changing option then we get the touch vibration touch sound etc options the per app volume control and the me sound enhancer is also there and with that if you set this to youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth everything just sounds awesome and even the speaker quality is great over here no issues i have faced we have the bass booster preset over here also there is the enable hi-fi option let me go back there is the haptic feedback customization so you can actually customize the haptic feedback all over the ui so yeah, you can actually feel once you leave this particular section can actually feel the haptic feedback over here in the display settings we got the brightness level the adaptive brightness the lock screen customization and here we have the always on display got the custom options too then we have the lift to check phone you can actually disable that if you want to and for the face unlock you can actually have it on swiping on the lock screen to unlock that's great we have the screen timeout the dark theme and the font size display size the dpi customization the night light option is there and the colors you can actually customize to natural boosted saturated or adaptive i have been using it with a saturated one and we got the auto rotate of course then we have the minimum refresh rate and stuff minimum and maximum you can set it to 60 or 120 however you like it but of course i have been using it with the 120 hertz mode and that has been working really great for me the double tap to wake is working perfectly fine and we have the display cutout too then we have the full screen apps and you can actually force some particular apps to full screen if you like that way and we have the app refresh rate so this is really great that you can actually set per apps refresh rate while i'm talking about that let me actually tell you that with the thermal profiles do not set the youtube app to streaming or something because if you said that i have seen that youtube app turns out to be in 60 hertz mode for some reason so i'll just suggest that just put these to the benchmark mode for the benchmarking apps and just leave it like that do not change the youtube apps to streaming it may affect the refresh rate of that particular app and this rom actually is missing some things i would say like there is no system updater over here also there is no dc dimming option over here so these are the things that are missing but we got the extra dim feature but then again there is no dc dimming option in this particular rom that i have seen the safety net and stuff are they working you may ask and yes the safety net is working perfectly fine right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any problems over here right out of the box also the dear info stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p and the ir blaster i hope you can see it right there yep the ir blaster is actually working great no issues whatsoever so overall the rom's performance has been really good and once you are in the recent panel and stuff you can actually feel the vibration over here once you are scrolling like this and yes all the apps do stay in memory without any problems no issues whatsoever and from the recent panel you can actually go into the split top mode and that should be working fine just like this so yeah the split top is actually working perfectly great you can just go home and those apps stay together now again talking about the performance the overall performance of this rom is amazing and here are the android and geekbench score for reference with a cpu stress test on this particular build so that pretty much wraps up the video about the nusantara project version 4.5 on the redmi note 10 pro let me in the comments what do you guys think i feel this is one of the best roms that i have tested so far on the redmi note 10 pro and i have been definitely enjoying using this rom and yes i will probably keep daily driving on this rom until i find another good option and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you feel like this is tiro from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now